at ease. Brought to you by Post Honey Nut Crunch Raisin Bran. Delicious goodness that starts crunchy and stays crunchy. That's Post Honey Nut Crunch Raisin Bran. And of course, the free beer, as advertised. There you are. That'll be a buck a piece. For a free beer? Casino tax. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, over here, we've got all kinds of goodies. Valentine! We'll get a few more high rollers from Company B. I'll always room for our comrades in Company B. I'm in. You're out. Oh, come on, guys. No way, Olsen. We're not going to let you lose your plane fare home. <laughs> Who says I'm going to lose? You always lose, and I couldn't sleep at night knowing that you couldn't go home to see your baby on the count of our game. I got a hundred dollars. Just seen one baby, just seen them all. Hot seat here. <laughs> And they say Latins aren't sentimental. Now look, Olsen, I want you to go home, kiss your wife, kiss your baby, be a new daddy, come back safe, then we'll take your money. 21. Okay, pay up to gringo dog. And eight it is. Congratulations, sir. You're the winner of a very handsome pie. Less, of course, our usual commission. Those commissions seem to be getting larger. How much was it this time? 50%. 50%? Yeah, it's the old Baker Valentine trickle up theory. You put it down, it trickles up to us. Well, you're not going to trickle any more of mine. Wait a minute, you can't walk out a winner? Watch me. Pay it! Oh, uh, for he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. This barracks has been called to attention. Sir, excuse this unpardonable breach of military conduct, but we were right in the middle of a little celebration. Sergeant, you were gambling. Uh, uh, no, sir. You see, Corporal Olson's wife is expecting their first child. We were giving him a baby shower. The theme is Las Vegas weekend. Very clever. Uh, yeah, and, and if he has a little girl, we're going to call her roulette. Yeah, and if it's a boy, they'll call him Chip. And if he weighs over 200 pounds, you can call him Merlin. Merlin. Mer Merlin Olsen, right? <laughs> Damn fine joke, sir. You people are at attention. Gambling in the United States Army is a direct violation of Article 134 UCMJ. Uniform Code of Military Justice. <laughs> Now you wipe that smile off of your face, Baker. Because you and Valentine have tested my authority for the last time. I'm going to see to it that you never do it again. I promise you. You all have enough time to gamble? Must mean that you don't have enough to do. Soldiers who don't have enough to do Get soft. <laughs> but we're going to change all that. <laughs> From now on, Reveille will be at 0500. You will do the daily dozen a dozen times. Then you all will GI this barracks, stand at attention for a daily white glove inspection. Uh, sir, don't you think 0500's a little early? Sergeant Valentine will wake up the barracks at 0430. Oh, sir, he was only kidding. Private Baker will wake up Sergeant Valentine at 0400. Any of you high rollers want to try for the 0330? <laughs> Oh, we're not 
another thing. Every man in this barracks is restricted to post for 30 days. Uh, but, sir, Corporal Olson has a leave. His wife's expecting a child. Coochie coo. <laughs> Have a nice day. What about my trip home? Okay, okay, look, we got ourselves in a little problem, but we'll get out of it, right, Bell? Absolutely. We never fail. Absolutely. <laughs> is operational goody the whole system's back online that's a big well done maxwell i'll alert the satellite network myself fine sir the priority code is com com send pen command communication center pentagon mm -hmm. i don't think so maxwell isn't it che purse def def uh colonel i'm pretty sure it's com com send pen che purse def def com com send pen five bucks says you're wrong it's a best good who'll settle it um uh, corporal gray has the op man the what operations manual sir <laughs> oh, oh okay let's see the color of your money well, you're okay. all right fine good enough I'm sure, sir, the Colonel and Maxwell cannot be disturbed in the computer room during maintenance. Maintenance? My rifle buddy's been in there an hour and a half. Fine, Major. I'll give him that message. Uh, Corporal Gray, we need you. Colonel Major Hawkins is here to see you. Sir, the men in A Company are in violation of Rule 134 UCMJ. Hold that thought. Corporal Gray? Yes, sir. What is the priority code for the satellite network? Isn't it Chapers, Def Def, or ComCom Send Pen? It's ComCom Send Pen. Rats. <laughs> what was that charge? Gambling on a post, sir. Well, that's a clear violation of military regulations. You're dismissed, Maxwell. <laughs> and let this be a lesson to you. Try to keep them out, sir, but they presented a very logical case. Uh, we're here to see Colonel Clapp. These are the criminals responsible, sir. We're not criminals, sir. Quiet, quiet. We'll discuss this in my office in a calm, orderly, military fashion. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> All right, where shall we begin? Simple, sir. All leaves and furloughs canceled, restricted to the post for 30 days. Plus short rashes and extra duty. Isn't 30 days a bit severe for a first offense? First offense, sir? Wessel? Sir. They missed Reveille three times this week. The barracks hasn't passed inspection since August. And two men answering their description have been seen putting up handbills offering the post orchestra for dances, weddings, and bar mitzvahs. Thanks, weasel. That's Wessel. Music, dancing, youthful pranks, Major. After all, this isn't a combat unit. This is a computer base, a data bank. To hell with computers, sir. Wars will always be fought by men with bombs, guns, and bayonets, the way civilized people have been doing for years. Well put, sir. I can tell you, Colonel, from my years as a hard, tough, award-winning combat officer, that a soft punishment makes a soft soldier. A soft soldier makes a soft army, and a soft army makes a soft nation. Switzerland is soft. She is? Look what they do when there's a war on, sir. They stay neutral and yodel. Soft? Soft? You call Baker soft? No, no, he said Switzerland is soft. Well, he meant you and every man on his base. Therefore, Major, on behalf of Private Baker and every man on his post, he challenges you to a test of physical fitness. Bless you. I'm going to kill you. What a splendid idea. What do you think of that, Hawkins? It's the best idea I've ever heard from an enlisted man, sir. Well, we'll give you men a couple of days to get ready, and then we'll have the contest on Thursday morning at 1100 hours. He agrees. Now, uh, let's get to the stakes. Stakes? That's right, stakes. If Baker wins, no company punishment, no KP, and Corporal Olsen goes to visit his baby. When I win, the punishment will remain the same, but it's 60 days, and you're going to do KP for every barracks on the post. He agrees. <laughs> I do. And just to make it really interesting, let's do this the old army way. No running through the woods in skimpy shorts and sneakers. We'll run a simulated attack course. Ten miles, full field pack, M16 with four magazines, and along the way, some high explosive shells, and then some live ammo, just like the real thing. He accepts. You don't scare him one bit. 
He doesn't? Now we got him just where we want him. You do. So you and I are on, right, Private Baker? Guess so, sir. Good luck. <laughs> How was practice? Oh, it was hot. I bet it was hot, huh? Ooh, was it hot, man? That Texas sun is brutal. Almost burnt me to a crisp. Got so hot, I had to put the top up on my Jeep. Woo! Here, have some of this. It'll cool you off. What is that? It's hot chicken soup. Cold water gives you cramps. How oh, I soup. <laughs> How about some SpaghettiOs? <laughs> Baker, you absolutely mystified me with your lack of stamina. You told me you're the fastest running back at Upper Sun Dusky High. It's not the same. I wasn't dodging bullets and landmines, and besides, I lied. You lied to moi? Hey, Olsen. The Red Cross called. Your wife just went into labor. <laughs> Him up. Oh, come on, Tony. Cheer up. The race will be over in a couple of hours. Get a nice cold bottle of wine and I'll massage your arms and your legs and your chest and your mm, shoulders. Better stop. I want the rest to be a surprise. That's better. And don't be so tough on Val. He really tried to help you. Yeah, Jack the Ripper tried to help people. They just didn't understand it. Val had an idea to do some research on Hawkins, so I ran him through the computer. Should have run him through a brick wall. No, wait. Major Hawkins isn't quite Superman. He got booted out of armor training. Oh, really? Why, was he mistreating a tank? <laughs> no. He can't stand them. Claustrophobia. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Claustrophobia will drive him crazy here in Texas, so I got him now. <laughs> attention! Attention! May I have your attention? Will you all please assemble at the starting point? As commanding officer of Camp Parkery, I'm very proud to participate in this contest of physical skill and raw courage. Two of our best men in the finest tradition of the military have prepared themselves for what is so aptly called a race. God bless the two of you and good luck. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you please. That's for good luck. Wait till you see what I have for you at the finish line. That's in case I don't make it to the finish line. Gentlemen, take your marks, please. Are you ready? Ready? Ready and... One for the money, two for the show. Hawkins is still in the lead. Not only has he crossed the log, but he's doing push-ups. <laughs> Obviously, he doesn't want to get too far ahead and embarrass Private Baker. Hey! Hey! Ten! Eleven! Twelve! Thirteen! Fourteen! Fifteen! Sixteen! Seven! 
Mr. Sweetheart, because he's jumping into the water to cool himself off. Major Hawkins smoothly slips through the underbrush, heading for the next checkpoint, while Baker continues to flounder around the pond. I'm gonna kill Valentine. Hawkins has just reached checkpoint four. Where's Tony? Uh, I can't see him yet. Major Hawkins just swung across the pond. With one hand. He's saluting with the other. The man's incredible. <laughs> Here comes Baker. <laughs> of the cheetah, Major Hawkins reaches the rock climb. Major Hawkins is up the rock almost as fast as the grappling hook. Hmm. Surprised he got the hook up in the first throw. in the wind just to dry himself off. <laughs> I just dug the tunnels. Come on, let's get out of here. Keep on moving. Come on. Over you now. No, no, no. Wait a minute. He could be in serious trouble. Hey, my first priority is to win this race. If he's still in trouble when we win, then we'll come back and save him. Let's get out of here. It must be a long tunnel because Major Hawkins is not coming out. I've got to get him out of there. Major? Major? Man, I'll give you a hand. Come on, we're wasting time. Better go down below, 
up to the finish line to watch Tony's closing kick. Let's go! Congratulations, Baker. There's nothing more thrilling than a come-from-behind win. Baker didn't win it. Huh? Sure he won it. He broke the tape first. No, he didn't. I win it. Mistake number one, Baker. You <laughs> never let your enemy off the hook. Are you did. You lose. And I win. But cheer up, men. Those 60 days you're going to do on KP, they're going to go by like... Two months! <laughs> oh, well, I guess you're right, Major. If you can win by nose, you can win by anything. Right! <laughs> it's probably the first time a soldier's ever won a race by backing over the finish line. You know, I think it would make an amusing editorial in the Post newspaper. Watch it, soldier. You know, a poster-sized blow up of this will look real nice on the wall of the officers' club of your old tank outfit. <laughs> Congratulations, Baker. You win. Yeah. But don't get cocky. And keep looking over your shoulder. Those footsteps that you hear will be mine. You don't scare him one bit. He's ready to run another race right now, pal. That's right. Yeah. At ease. We'll continue in a moment. But here's a rattle for the baby. Oh, Tony, but you... And here's to my stock for the little baby. They were size 11 and a half before I sent them to the laundry. Baby, that's <laughs> amazing, right? Maurice, you, you guys... I don't want to thank you, but wait, I gotta get out of here. These are for your wife. Oh, what are those? Um, there's a pot roast. Uh, this is gravy. And there's potato pancakes. That's what the food is terrible. Right. 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 Yo, Olsen! Here you go, my man. Here's, uh... $50 for the baby. Tell him his Uncle Bow gave it to him. Hey, I thought you were broke. I was, but I put some money on you in the race. <laughs> well, I was going to tell you about it, but see, no problem. I dug the tunnel, so I had to tell him to sit right here. For 10%? Me. Well, I dug all the tunnels to see it was my plan, so I decided 20% is all right. 20%? Even though you did run the race, I <laughs> Sunday, watch the New Jersey Generals against the Philadelphia Stars on USFL Football. Tuesday, Chachi must return to Milwaukee with Joni or lose her on Happy Days. Then Carmine becomes an overnight TV sensation with his song and dance act on Laverne and Shirley. Now stay tuned for the Renegades next, followed by the Gold Monkey.